Right then, hello everyone, welcome to the preview for Doncaster Rovers versus Hull City at the Keep Moat Stadium on Saturday the 20th of February, 3 o'clock kickoff there. And as match details come on there, it is an away game, so I've got to pay £10 for this one. No, codes will be sent out by the club. On to team news then, Callum Jones is close, is close to returning to full fitness after a hamstring injury. He's back in training now. Both Gavin White, Ankle and Tom Eves' calf may return next weekend for the Tigers' trip to AFC Wimbledon. The trio of Jones, White and Eves are all back on the training pitch and are all making good progress. Richie Smallwood does not need an operation on his knee injury, so he might feature again this season. Brandon Fleming, Groin, Festus Arthur, Thigh remain out injured. On to ref watch and the referee is Charles Breakspear. The two linos are Andrew Dallison and Steve Rushton. The fourth official is James it is James Adcock. On to stats then, these are taken from the Tigers. Last game against Wigan Athletic. Of those, they had 15 shots against Wigan did Hull City. Of those 15, eight were on target. Eight shots on target. What is going on? This is not supposed to happen. Hull City had 46% of possession. Hull City committed 10 fouls. The Tigers made 14 tackles. City won 45% of aerial duels in the game. And City made 397 passes in the game with a pass accuracy of 74%. I also think... Here's a stat for you. I think this is the first Hull City hat-trick since Abel Hernandez got uh, his hat-trick against Charlton in January 2016. I think. I think. It was a 6-0 win against Charlton that day. Just a 5-0 win this time out, though. What do I think? Then uh, Our confidence is sort of back in our forwards. It's going to be a difficult game, this one, but the Wigan result is exactly what we need heading into a game like this. The table is still tight, so we need to go on a bit of a winning run now. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident, because Donny are on a losing run, and we've just scored five. Yes, it was against 23rd in the league, but it's still five goals. That's what the strikers need. And one game changes everything. <laughs> On a serious note, though, one, day, one game doesn't make a season. 46 do. But the first 29 have put us in a good position to make something good of this season. On to head-to-head -head battles. And Josh McGuinness up top will have to get past Tom Anderson. And Jacob Greaves will have to stop Fejuri Okinaberi sneaking through the back. Lines. Current form then, neither team is in particularly brilliant form. We've got only one win in our last five. Doncaster, two wins in their last five. Doncaster just lost three games in a row. And, well, they lost to Fleetwood, lost to Dan Batty's Fleetwood, who put in a man of the match performance there. Lost to four, hit, wonder, Charlie Wyke against Sunderland. And then we're beaten, we're edged out 1-0 by Accrington Stanley. Um, as for us, drew one all with Lincoln in the Papa John's, but as you can see, it's asterisked because we lost 4-3 on penalties. Lost 1-0 to Burton, drew 0-0 with Lincoln in the league. Lost 1-0 to MK Dons and then beat Wigan 5-0. Onto the league table now, then you can see it's very, very tight up and down the leagues. The bottom half, well, the bottom four, five, six, the bottom seven is clearly the bottom seven, and then the top 17 is clearly the top 17. You need 50 points to be safe in this division. So, well, typically, you need 50 points to be safe in this division. So us, Lincoln and Peterborough are not going to get relegated this season. <laughs> We're all right on that front. But yeah, it's very tight. It's very tight. 12 points from 17th up to 6th. It seems as though the gap is getting bigger between 17th and 6th, but it's still very, very tight. And two win, a losing run, a winning run can take you right up and down. Even Bristol, teams like Bristol Rovers, Rochdale, AFC, Wimbledon, they, if they put a winning run together, they could creep up into the playoff fight. And it's very, it's so, so very tight in this league. On to around the grounds then on League One, match day 30. If you look back at, league, at the league table, we've played 29 games. We are now on track as to what the season should have been. So Gillingham face Bristol Rovers, Accrington Stanley face Shrewsbury, Burton Albion welcome Sunderland to the Pirelli Stadium while Swindon Town take on Crew Alexandra. Fleetwood Town face Charlton Athletic, Ipswich face Oxford in what is an 8th versus 11th clash. That one could be massive as for both teams' playoff 
chances. MK Dons face Northampton. Peterborough United face AFC Wimbledon. Portsmouth face Blackpool. Rochdale face Plymouth Argyle. And Wigan Athletic face Lincoln City. Wigan in two two games. They'll have faced the top two teams in the league. Memorable match now then. We head back to the 16th of April 2011 at the what was then the KC Stadium in the Championship. Hull City 3, Doncaster Rovers 1, Richard Garcia and a Matty Fryer, and a Matty Fryer, Matty Fryer, ba- 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 I can't talk, English Joe. I just slapped myself then, don't worry. <laughs> it, get your heads out the gutter. Anyway, Richard Garcia, uh, Richard Garcia goal and a Matty Fryer brace. There we go. Got us the win and Frank Musa got the goal for Doncaster. Our team that day, very different. You, ours have got squad numbers on Doncaster's Amit because I couldn't be bothered to find them. I was making these graphics so late last night. I'd done. I, I, yesterday I was out. <laughs> I'm recording this Friday. Yesterday I was I was out all day. I was I walked eighteen thousand one hundred meters. Yeah, so I was very very tired and making these graphics at ten o'clock at night didn't really do me much good. Last time out then, second of December twenty twenty, KCOM Stadium, champ not championship, League One. Uh, <laughs> I nearly said championship then. Christ. Um Hull City beat Doncaster Rovers two one goals from Josh McGinnis and Tom Eves got us the win that day. Shared shirts, now then we're looking at Ryan Mason today. Someone who I didn't know was um, was a Doncaster player until I was researching memorable match. I was going to put Malik Wilkes or Herbie Kane in here, but I I, I went for uh, went for Mason instead because I thought it was more interesting. Interesting thing about Mason's time with Doncaster was it was technically three different loan spells. As you can see there, the second asterisk. It was technically three different loan spells, well loan deals across the 2010-11 and 11-12 seasons. But for Doncaster, he was on loan there from Tottenham from 2010 to 2011. In 20 appearances, he scored the once. For us, he joined us for a club record fee in 2016 in the summer under Mike Phelan for, from Tottenham. Um, then it was involved in the clash of heads with Gary Cahill, which sadly ended his career at Stamford Bridge in January. Never played for us again. But uh, he's still very well loved in the Hull City fan community and he's he's making a career for himself in coaching, which is very, very nice to see. In 20 appearances for us, Ryan Mason scored two goals. On to my predicted 11 now then in the 4-3-3 formation standard for Grant McCann, as you'll know by now. So in goal, we've got Matt Ingram, a back four of it, right back, Louis Coyle, the captain, the two centre backs are Rhys Burke and Jacob Greaves. At left back, we've got Callum Elder. In defensive midfield, we've got Alfie Jones, and the two central midfielders are George Huddyman and Greg Doherty. On the right wing, we've got Malik Wilkes. On the left wing, we've got Keen Lewis Potter. And up top, we have Josh McGuinness. On to the bench, then, we've got George Long. James Scott, Josh Emanuel, Regan Slater, Dan Crowley, Max Clark, and Billy Chadwick. Max Clark played for the under twenty threes on uh, on Thursday night, so it was so it might be touch and go that one. As did I think Scott, I think Chadwick might have done as well. Not too sure. I know that Scott and Clark definitely did. McLaughlin was on that pitch as well. I think Thomas Mayer was. But yeah, anyway. So that's the team in picture form. The, the, that's probably been on there for a while. That's the team on the pitch. So, uh, yeah, on to my wanted 11 now then. Even though we won 5 0, we're still sticking with this. So then, in goal, in the 4 1 2 1 2 formation, in goal is Matt Ingram. At right back, we've got Josh Emmanuel. The two centre backs are Alfie Jones and Jacob Greaves. Left back, Callum Elder. Defensive midfield, we've got Max Clark. Two central midfielders are George Honeyman and Greg Doherty. Dan Crowley is in attacking midfield. And up top, we've got Malik Wilkes and Keen Lewis Potter. On the bench, then, in my wanted 11, we've got George Long, Louis Coyle, 
Reese Burke, James Scott, Jordan Flores, Regan Slater, and Josh McGinnis. That's the team in picture form then. That's the team on the pitch. Predicted score time now then. Am I confident? Sort of. Is it blind optimism? Maybe, but it's, the, it's exactly the result we need heading into this game where we have to win. We simply have to win because it will help our playoff chance. Not, not even our playoff chance. Our, our automatic promotion chances so much. And I think we will pull it out the bag against Grant McCann's former side. 2 0 victory for Hull City. Thank you very much for watching the preview, everyone. Um, I'll see you very soon. Make sure you subscribe, like the video and check out the two videos which are on your screen now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.